What's going on guys? My name is Kenji and welcome back to my channel. Hopefully it's not the first time that you're watching one of my videos, but in case it is, I'm a fourth year medical student and biomedical science graduate studying at King's College London. So you guys have seen my first year day in the life of medical students, you've seen my second year, my third year, and it's finally time for my fourth year day in the life of a medical student vlog. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. In this video, I'll be taking you guys through the entire day from morning to night on my emergency medicine and critical care rotation. Today I'm actually in the a &E, or the accident and emergency department or if you're American the emergency room and I'm so excited to take you guys along with me. Today I actually woke up around 7 45 a.m. The reason being is we don't actually start until 10 a.m. on our emergency rotation because patients need some time to wake up in the morning and realize they have a painful shoulder to fall over or to get into a car accident. So we actually discovered that 10 a.m. is normally the perfect time where we arrive there's actually patients to see. So I woke up around 7 45 a.m. I had my breakfast got ready and the last thing to do is get into some more appropriate clothing so I'll see you guys in one second. All right, so I'm all dressed now and not gonna lie, baby blue probably isn't my favorite color on me, but it's all good, it's all given, so I'm gonna have to work with it until I become an actual doctor and get to like buy my own and have my name on mine. Uh, but for now, this is what we're rocking. Uh, it's currently 9.15 in the morning. I live around a half an hour drive to my hospital. So I'm gonna jump in my car, meet my clinical partner, and I'll see you guys at the hospital. So it's 9.45 a.m. right now and I just made it to the hospital. The two best things about not being in London anymore is the first is that I don't have to sit in a really, really crowded bus or train to get to my placement. All I have to do is either uh, drive my car or there's also a free shuttle bus that takes me from my actual home to the hospital, which is free and that's also a plus. The second reason is that there's no traffic at all. So although I live around 14 miles from the hospital that I'm placed at, 14 miles with zero traffic at all is under like half an hour, which is so amazing. And that makes me so happy. Whenever I actually get to the hospital, I always feel like a bit nervous or a bit kind of, you know, excited to fill of adrenaline because you never really know what's coming in Nani. You never really know like what challenging situation you might be in. You never know what you're going to see. So honestly, like getting to the hospital and walking to the a &E, it's the most exciting feeling in the entire world and I absolutely love it. So I've got around 15 minutes until I need to be on the actual ward. So I'm going to grab my stuff out of the car, uh, get ready and then head on to the ward and see what patients we have. So I'll see you guys very shortly. And of course, the most important but most annoying thing is getting that mask on right before I go in. All right, mask check, mask check. <laughs> So it's around 1 p.m. now and I'm just about to grab my lunch. Um, so before I actually eat, I want to catch you guys up really quickly on um, what I've seen this morning. So the first thing I saw when I came in is a patient who was septic. So I'm not entirely sure what caused his sepsis, but uh, sepsis is basically a systemic infection and it's, uh, it's a very big kind of response to an infection in your body. And it's a life-threatening condition. So if you don't start treatment within um, a couple of hours, normally we try and target to start treatment within one hour but if you don't start treatment very soon it's actually a life-threatening condition the patient can actually die and the way we start treatment is something called sepsis six it's where you give three things and you take three things to make it six the three things we gave the patient was oxygen antibiotics and also fluids and the three things we took from the patient were uh, blood cultures to see what sort of bacteria the uh, patient had we also measured his lactate and we also measured his uh, urine output as well to make sure that his kind of kidneys and his uh, body is functioning. But as soon as he came in, we measured his observations and we saw that he had signs of sepsis. And the signs of sepsis are basically uh, tachycardia, so a fast heart rate, uh, high respiratory rate, low blood pressure, high temperature, and a few other things as well. So that was the first patient I saw. Uh, the second patient that I saw um, basically had a laceration to one of their hands. So while they're working at work, um, they got their hand caught in one of these machines and they ended up having a laceration to their hand. Um, so my job was basically to assess the patient, uh, assess whether or not he can move his hand and feel his hand to make sure his nerves were working and his muscles were working and he didn't damage any tendons as well. So I examined his hand as well um, and it wasn't actually bleeding, so that was good. Uh, so we examined his hand and I also gave him a tetanus shot 
The reason why you give patients tetanus shots is that whenever you have a sort of laceration injury, you do worry they may get tetanus. So to prevent this from happening, I actually gave them a tetanus jab, uh, which is really, really fun to do as well, because I haven't actually given uh, patients injections in quite a long time. And then I asked one of the senior clinicians, um, one of the senior doctors come and uh, suture his uh, hand back together. I actually would have done the suturing myself if I had felt confident enough to do it, but because it was in such a difficult location in his hand, I thought it would be a lot more uh, suitable if one of the doctors actually did it for me. And they did it, which was amazing. And he actually went home uh, within around an hour, an hour and a half. So I'm about to have lunch now and I thought I'd show you guys uh, what lunch I have. The most amazing thing about this hospital is because of COVID, everyone actually gets a free lunch here. So the, all my lunches for the last kind of three or four weeks of being in this hospital have been completely free and it saved me so much money. I'm honestly getting so fat. But just to show you guys what I'm eating real quick. I've got a uh, jacket potato with some tuna, um, some cheese, and also some coleslaw as well. And I've got an orange and some water there as well for lunch. So I've got around, uh, about 25 minutes, maybe 20 minutes to eat. I do normally eat with uh, my friends, but today they're all really, really busy clinically. So I didn't actually manage to catch up with them. So I'm gonna eat this by myself really quickly and then head back to the A&E for another couple of hours before I head home. So I'll catch you guys up with um, everything else I see later on this, um, this evening, and I'll see you guys on the next shot. All right guys, so it's currently around 3.30 p.m. and I just finished off at the hospital. The best thing about the emergency department and also just being in fourth year medical school is you can kind of choose your own timing. So we normally come in for around 10 a.m. and leave around uh, 4.30, sometimes like 3.30ish. So we try to get in around five or six hours in every single day and throughout the whole entire week, that's quite a lot of hours of emergency medicine. So it's a really lovely day today. The sun is out and shining as you guys can see and it's time to jump in my car, head back home and I'll catch you guys up on the day so far once I get home. So I'll see you in a bit. So it's currently around 4 p.m. and I'm all dressed out of my uh, blue scrub clothes and I feel much better like just chilling in my own uh, sort of clothes. The plan for the next three and a half hours is to have a quick snack. I actually managed to pick up one of these uh, free uh, sweet chili chicken wraps at the hospital. The plan is to uh, work for the next three and a half hours. Um, I've been writing one of my publications for the last kind of six months and I'm in the final stages of actually getting it written. So I'm gonna work on writing this publication for some of my research for the next three to three and a half hours and then I'm gonna hit gym and come back home. So I'm about to jump into this revision session and I'll see you guys on the next shot. Alright, so it's around 7 p.m. now, and I realized that after I got home today, I never actually took the time to tell you guys what I saw after having lunch. The first patient that I saw after lunch straight away was a patient who came in um, after having an overdose, and they were in and out of consciousness, so it was really hard to take a history for them. I found this patient really challenging because, as I just said, they just tried to take their life, and you're one of the first people they're seeing after they tried to commit suicide, which was really, really sad because uh, they came in, um, they were kind of crying, really, really upset, they were calling themselves like ugly and, and fat, and all of these like really sad things and they kept apologizing saying that they wish that they weren't here they wish they were living so it's really difficult to try and assess the patients at the same time and also try and make them feel better and trying to like make them understand that we're here to look after them and really try to be there for them so it's really difficult to you know to be a doctor to try and be a doctor to try to be a medical student to try and treat his patients but also how to deal with your own emotions being upset about seeing this person here and also you know uh, trying to calm patient and comfort them as well and that's obviously something i'll learn about over the next few years in, in regards to dealing with a difficult case like this. But having to deal with an overdose um, you know, patient um, for one of the first times ever was actually quite challenging. So that was the first case we saw. The second case we saw was really, really strange. Um, I was actually dealing with one of the patients, one of the other patients um, in the A&E, and one of the nurses uh, were kind of wheeling in a patient who was completely unconscious, and the doctor was with us, and the nurse said that this patient needs to be seen right now. They've completely lost consciousness, and they need someone to assess them right away. So the doctor was really busy with another patient, so he said straight away to ask medical students to go ahead and take this patient in, uh, assess them completely, then he'll come and assess the patient himself once he's uh, kind of done with the last patient. So this was kind of really scary because 
It's only me and another medical student who are given the responsibility of looking after this patient who is completely unconscious, who's just come in. We have no idea like why they're here, you know, what happened to them because they're completely unconscious and they had no one there with them. And it was really, really scary at first. So to kind of walk you guys through, you know, what you do in a normal emergency situation with any patient, whether they're unconscious or whether they've been hit by a car, whatever their reason might be, is to do an A to E assessment. Um, and that's actually what we did here. So as soon as the patient came in, uh, we started off with A and the first thing you want to do is make sure that they have a secure airway. Uh, this patient wasn't actually able to talk to me. If they are able to talk to me, I can straight away say that their airway is fine. They're, man they're maintaining their own airway because they're actually able to talk to me. But this patient wasn't able to talk to me. So we had to do something called a head tilt chin lift, whereby you kind of just lift their head back and kind of push their chin up to make sure that their tongue isn't covering their airway and they can actually breathe. Once we did that, we moved on to breathing. In breathing, basically what we did is to start off by inspecting their chest, making sure they have no stab wounds to their chest or any scars or anything we need to know about on their chest. We then put our hands on the patient and asked them to breathe in. Of course, she wasn't able to uh, breathe in for me, but I could feel that there was equal expansion of both her lungs on both sides. So I know that both her lungs are able to inflate properly and one lung isn't collapsed. So that was really good. After that, we moved on to uh, percuss. So that's like making sounds on the chest, making sure that I can actually hear the you know the sound travel through their chest and come out the reason why is because let's say someone comes in with a collapsed lung and one of their lungs is completely collapsed if you tap on that chest because their lung is empty because their lung has collapsed it will be hyper resonant so the sound that you'll get back will be very resonant the next thing that we do is take out our stethoscope so we put our stethoscope on listen to their lungs as well make sure that we can hear air moving into their lungs on both sides and there's no kind of infection or sound sounds of infection or anything like that we then move on to C which is their uh, cardiorespiratory system so things like you know kind of pinching their finger to make sure we can see blood in a fingernail bed uh, listening to their heart sounds and all of these different things and finally finishing it off with E which is exposed so exposing her whole entire body making sure we haven't missed any obvious signs of any scars or any stab wounds uh, any rashes anywhere and that's like a basic kind of quick run through of what we do in the emergency department by the time the doctor was actually ready to come back and assess the patient himself we'd already um, assessed the patient completely we'd already taken blood from her we already had a cannula into her hand, so like, kind of like a, a needle uh, into her hand, which we can give uh, medication straight away. We already had a venous blood gas sample taken. We also had an arterial blood gas sa sample taken. We had an ECG done as well. So by the time the doctor already came, we'd already accomplished a huge part of the assessment process. So his job was a lot quicker and a lot easier. And this was one of the moments, guys, where I honestly felt like a real doctor. I actually felt like I'm making a difference, you know? I'm actually helping the clinical team. Well, the doctor's already arrived, we've already saved them loads of time we made sure the patient gets the quickest treatment possible and the best treatment possible and i felt absolutely amazing to be able to do this and obviously this is quite new for me it's only my third week on emergency medicine but i've already learned so much it's been such a massive and steep learning curve in the last few weeks and i definitely feel like i'm on the right track to being a relatively good doctor which i'm so proud about so those are the two cases i saw before coming home as i mentioned it's around 7 p.m right now and i've been dying to go to gym all day i love medicine but i definitely need to break from it sometimes so i'm gonna head to the gym right now Hit a quick workout and I'll see you guys as soon as I'm back. So it's around 8.30 p.m. right now and I'm back home from the gym. I had a nice quick workout today in the gym and now it's time for the best part of my day, which is dinner. I'll show you guys really quickly what I made earlier on. So as you guys can see um, over here, I have a Thai red curry, which I actually made uh, last weekend, last Sunday. Why I tend to do medical school because I'm really, really busy throughout the uh, entire week is I try and make all my meals all at once on a Sunday and I have the same thing every single day from Monday to till Friday, which is really, really boring, but it saves me so much time when I'm medical school. So I'm gonna eat dinner really quickly, and then I'm not entirely sure what I'm gonna do after this. Maybe do a bit more work, maybe do some chilling. I'll let you guys know in around 10 minutes. So it's now 10 p.m., and for the last kind of hour, hour and a half after eating dinner, I sat over on my uh, monitor behind me, as you can see, and I was editing um, a bunch of videos for a particular project, which I can't tell you guys uh, yet, but a very amazing project I'm so excited to like let you guys know about. Hopefully over the next few weeks, I will finally announce what I'm working on. But yeah, I finished editing a bunch of videos. As I said, it's now 10 p.m. and I'm getting kind of sleepy, kind of tired. So it's time for me to uh, have a shower, get ready for bed. Also like iron all my clothes for tomorrow on placement. Tomorrow I'm not actually seeing patients. We have a simulation day where we're gonna have some uh, emergency simulation training uh, using one of the kind of dummy in the hospital uh, to kind of um, act out any sort of emergency situation. And it'll be our job uh, to work in a team with all the medical students to try and uh, diagnose
diagnose a patient after examining them. So I'm really, really excited for tomorrow. It's always a bit nerve wracking because you're kind of in a room uh, with a bunch of people watching you. So it is a bit nerve wracking, but always so, so much fun to actually be, uh, you know, simulating these emergencies that we'll one day have to be doing uh, in real life as doctors. So I actually can't wait to, to have that tomorrow. I want to wrap up this video here, guys. I want to thank you so much for watching this video and uh, for all the support I've had on my channel recently. You're all so amazing. I really hope you've enjoyed this day in the life of uh, medical students uh, on my a &E rotation. Over the next year until next August, I'm going to be uh, rotating through different specialties of medicine. So I definitely will do a day in the life for every single kind of rotation that I have. So I'm so excited to take you guys along with me for the next journey over the whole entire year of being a fourth year medical student. Again, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you guys are subscribed. Please like the video, turn notifications on, share this video with a friend who's interested in medicine. And I'll see you guys on the next video.